What is your... Oh, I've already answered that one. <laughs> hey again. So today is absolutely pouring it down with rain in true typical British fashion. So we aren't riding today. I wanted to do a video this weekend. I was hoping to do a vlog on the M209 because obviously I haven't done that yet and I have had it I think about a month now so, and you guys are probably waiting for that so sorry that the weather has <laughs> let me down once again so yeah um so I wanted to do a video I'm absolutely bored out of my mind today because I have literally nothing to do so yeah here we are we're gonna do a question and answers a Q&A as they call it here on YouTube so yeah um let's get into it let's see how we can get on so the first one is from paste underscore dude on instagram and he's put what bike would you have if money was no object this is one of those questions where i'm like uh. <laughs> um just one bike if money was no object that's really hard because i feel like i'd want some fancy a beautiful super bike but then it wouldn't be good for an awful lot would it like if you're gonna commute on it on a weather maybe i'm thinking too practical about this why am i going so into this i just need to say which bike is my favorite right probably something italian you know something really uh what's the word exotic i guess if you could only have one and it was money wasn't an issue surely you're gonna go for the most expensive right isn't that how it works so yeah, probably something exotic, but maybe like a Desmond Eatshire, you know, something like that, an MV, uh, R1M. I know the HP4 race is supposed to be absolutely amazing, but yeah, you get the idea. <laughs> Sorry, rubbish answering these questions. <laughs> From Princess with three S's, Coley. I hope that's right. I hope I didn't butcher your name. Uh, any advice? for someone looking at learning to ride. So, learning to ride. Uh, I'm not good at giving advice, but this is what I did. So when I was about 15, I was hanging around with people who had scooters. They were older than me, and we used to like have goes on their bikes, and I used to ride around the car park on them illegally. <laughs> and that was like a good way of sort of Learn obviously you can't really compare a scooter to a, a bike as like regarding gears but it's a good way of balancing setting off in the throttle I guess uh, it's not really anything like what am I saying <laughs> but yeah that's what I used to do and then I went for my CBT and it was the best day of my life I absolutely loved it and I was riding on the road legally and it was just brilliant like seriously my CBT was amazing I really enjoyed it. <laughs> That's when I knew bikes were going to be a big thing in my life. So yeah, um, if you have any friends with say a 125, maybe an older 125, they're not too bothered about it, get them to take you to a car park and then let them try and teach you. Obviously they're not teachers, but I'm sure they can kind of help you because they ride and just, you know, get a feel for the clutch and that sort of stuff. And then if you if you decide you like it, because that's a problem, a lot of people don't know if they're going to like it. So they're worried about booking the CBT or whatever. But that way you can see if you're going to get the gist of it quick enough. Not quick enough, because people are, learn at different speeds, don't they? But I don't know, I think it's just a good way. Because uh, it's not nice to go into something when you have zero experience and you have no idea what you're getting in, into, is it really? So that would be a good way of getting a taster for it if you want. but yeah if you're passionate about it and you want to do it just go and do it i know it can be scary but riding a bike isn't that hard trust me it's not and there's a lot of people who come to me and um, they drive and they're saying you know what, what's it like in comparison is it going to be different and to be honest if you can drive you'll be able to ride a bike but it's just like clutch control it's the same sort of thing and balance but once you're going balance is fine <laughs> it's funny you know like I go to the hairdressers on my bike sometimes and all the women in there are like, what? You ride a bike? Like, how do you not fall off how, when you stop? How do you not just drop on the floor? And it's like, well, I put my feet down. 
<laughs> but yeah, you get what I'm saying. It's like balance. It's just easy. Like once you're rolling, you're not gonna just drop off. So yeah, just go for it. I've got a guy called Danny, who's I'm guessing his name's Danny, by the way. What's your next tattoo you have planned? I always have tattoos planned. I just can't afford them. But my next one, I'm pretty sure, is gonna be here. But I don't like to reveal my ideas. Just yet, I'd rather get it first. So I'm not gonna say much about that. But I literally, I want tattoos like all the time. I just can't afford them. What was the top speed you hit on your M209? We can't discuss that on the internet. <laughs> I'm sorry. Another one here. Um, do you have a favorite route that you ride or do you just go wherever the road takes you? So I'm one of them people who likes to be organized. I don't like not knowing where I'm going. I know that sounds crazy on a motorbike, but I just, I just panic. <laughs> so I live in Manchester, so we usually go over to the Peak District. Um, sometimes the Lake District, not too often. We usually go Yorkshire, so Settle, Hawes, um, Devil's Bridge, but I'm not lucky on Devil's Bridge. But yeah, we sort of go around those places. As I said, I live in Manchester, so around here is crap. It's just buildings and urban stuff. It's rubbish. I have to ride at least probably 45 minutes to get somewhere decent. That's pretty crap. Well, yeah. Oh, and Wales. Wales isn't too far. It's about uh, an hour and a half away, so it's not too bad. So we tend to go to Wales quite a lot. In an ideal world, what are you doing in 10 years? So these questions always get me. And you usually get these questions on inter in interviews and stuff like that, and I'm just like, I have no idea. I can't answer these questions. So what would I like to do? In oh, where you know when they say, where do you see yourself in five years? Life changes so much all the time. I don't have a clue. Where would I like to be? I'd like to be riding bikes for a living. Is that going to happen? Probably not. But it's okay to. Wish and hope for shit, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, um, something to do with bikes. It's got to be, hasn't it, really? I don't have any massive life ambitions. I just want money, cars, trainers, dogs, tattoos. That's all it. <laughs> so I've got any more track days this year. I hope to God, yes. But at the minute, my financial situation is not great. I'm going through some shit at the minute, so at the moment, no, but I'm hoping something comes through and I can do a track day before the end of the year. We had a bit of a uh, malfunction, my camera died, so I had to drive to my boyfriend's house and get the charger and come back and start again. So yeah, thanks camera. It was showing, it was like over half full and obviously it wasn't, so. What is your ultimate goal with respect to your career? So, I work in the motor trade at the minute and I have done for about four and a half years. Uh, that was more, always my goal. In school, it was always like, what do you want to do? You know, people had these massive ideas of what they wanted to do and I didn't know. I didn't have a clue. All I knew was it had to involve cars or bikes. At the time, more cars because I was more into cars than anything. So, when it was, you know, going to college and all that sort of stuff, it was like, oh damn, I don't know what I don't, don't know what I want to do. And even now, I, I, I don't know what I want to do. I don't. And that sounds stupid as a 24 year old, maybe, to say I don't know where I want my life to go, but I, I, it's so hard. I, I hope I'm not the only one who struggles with this, but I just don't know. I just know I wanted it to involve cars and bikes. There's not much else I know. So I do digital digital trying to say right marketing at the minute but that is about to change due to something that's out of my hands so will i be staying in the motor trade i honestly don't know yet so yeah pretty open to options at the minute <laughs> superman or batman batman 100 percent is that even a question is there an exhaust you're leaning to, towards for the MT-09? So yes, there is. Uh, a couple. <laughs> so, Acropovic. Wait, let me say this right. I've met the the guys behind Acropovic, right? And I still say Acropovic because it's just easier to say. I have to think about it when I'm like, Acropovic. Like, I have to think, like, wait a minute, how do I say it? So that is the correct way of saying it, but I still say acropobic. 
I hope they don't hate me for that <laughs> because I still say that. So yeah, the full full system titanium exhaust, which is exactly the same as what I had on my MT-07. I know that sounds amazing because I've had one and my dad has an MT-09 Tracer and he's got one on there too. So I know exactly how it sounds. So ideally, probably an Akapovich, but I, I don't know. I'm still not sold on the massive cat underneath. You know how it, when the bike sat there, it looks fine. But when, you know, like on a track day or whatever, and you went over and you can see the underneath, I'm like, Ugh, it's a bit ugly. <laughs> so yeah, um, the other one I've seen that I like is the Arrow. Uh, there's a guy on Instagram called R6 Real T O R One, I think it is. Um, he's got an M209. His bike is beautiful, and he has an arrow in his, and it looks it looks really good, and it sounds amazing too. I've always liked Arrow. I think they're a really good company. Their exhausts are always spot on. Um, I become to know what Arrow. What was that? Was that English? <laughs> I become to know of Arrow because mom and dad both had Triumphs. Um, when I was younger, uh, so I knew them as an exhaust for triumphs, so to speak, but they always sounded absolutely amazing, but nowadays I think they're definitely branching out and they're not really known for triumph exhaust so much anymore, so that's good for them. Uh, the other one is SC Project, I currently are developing a new exhaust as we speak for the M209, so I'm looking forward to see what that's like, so maybe that, I don't know yet, depends when I actually see it. And what else is the Yoshimura? They look pretty. I'm not sure if it, that's how you pronounce that either. I'm just not good at pronouncing anything, though, am I? I can't even speak English. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that might be another good one. They look really nice. What I want, ideally, is tucked underneath. I'm really, really picky when it comes to exhaust, like stupidly picky. So, it's got to be how I want it, if that makes sense. Um, so, it's definitely one underneath that I want really but again I'm picky with sound as well I don't just want to put anything on that triple engine deserves some respect it deserves some quality doesn't it let's be honest um, basically for those who don't know my boyfriend is a TT racer and a road racer and I've just been asked what he does for a living so my boyfriend my but yeah basically he works for Wigan Yamaha as a mechanic so he's a fully qualified Yamaha mechanic with MOT the lot. So yeah, he's pretty much on his career path and I'm just not. <laughs> but yeah, that's what he does. So why do you have an MT-07 number plate on an MT-09? <laughs> I love this question. <laughs> I think I secretly like trolling people. Like when I did my track day, I had my MT-07 plate on it off my old MT-07. If you saw my Cadwell video. And people are like, oh, you're the girl in the MTL7. And I'm like, no, it's an MTL9. But obviously, they've just been behind it and saw the MTL7 and they didn't click on what it was. And I think it was kind of funny. I don't know. It was a personal reg. It was a present. It's got my initials on there. I just thought, I'll keep it. There isn't any MTL9 in my initials. It's actually on a Citroen C4 Picasso. So yeah, if you are that person that owns that car, hit me up. <laughs> so yeah, I just decided to keep it. It's just nice having a personal reg, I think. Um, and yeah, it's nice to annoy people and get people asking, why have you got an MT07 plate on it? <laughs> so yeah, that's the real answer to that. What do you do to afford your toys? <laughs> I can't afford a lot, to be honest. Um, I'll be real with you. My bike is on finance they always have been i can't afford to buy a bike outright and if you can that's absolutely brilliant i wish i could but i can't so yeah uh i only have the one toy i would love a drag bike as well but i can't afford that either so yeah i pretty much scrape through every month unfortunately probably like a lot of you guys as well so don't think i'm absolutely wadded with money because i have a brand new bike because that's not the case what is your height? I'm 5'9". It was like in primary school, I was the tallest out of everyone. I look like a freak. You know when you'd have like school photos? Not the ones of just you, like your classroom and stuff. Just ones of you like standing up, I would look ridiculous. Like all my mates were so small and I was just the giant with ginger hair that got bullied 
obviously. <laughs> so yeah, I'm pretty tall for a girl, I'd say. Not so much anymore, but still sort of tall. I can ride pretty much anything, so yeah, it's great being tall. <clears throat> what is your dream helmet to own? That's quite a good one, actually. See what this is what I mean? Unique questions, that's a good one. Uh, my dream helmet would be an Xperia 3 in my custom design, probably. Uh, it'd be good to have one painted up with like my logo and maybe whatever I wanted, that sort of thing. Uh, I'd probably still have 93 on there somewhere, I don't worry about that. <laughs> but yeah, probably my own like custom painted helmet, Xperia 3. Of course, by Shui. <clears throat> what is your most favourite bike that you've ridden? Oh god, it's hard because some of them are really different. So my favourite bike that I've ridden, um, you know how much I love the Jix 1000. For me, that's a beautiful bike to ride. Absolutely seamless. It's just so nice to ride. So for me, that's probably it. But the R1, I rode the the 2015 upwards R1, and that was incredible. It's just an absolute animal of a bike. Uh, you cannot deny how much of an animal the R1 is. As that cross plane engine, when you open that up, it's just like a dream. It's just opening this absolute beast, and you're just on for the ride, basically. <laughs> Honestly, it's absolutely incredible. So, between them two, probably. <laughs> Where is the best spot to watch from the Isle of, watch the Isle of Man TD from? That's a good one. My favourite spot to watch is if you go up to the Gooseneck on the mountain, and then if you go to the next corner along, you'll be in a field. But there, it's absolutely spot on. It's a left hander up the hill um, after the Gooseneck, and it's just so close. And you've got all the view of Isle of Man in the background. Honestly, it's just such a good spot. Like, what made you love bikes? So I've had a few questions regarding how I got into bikes. So basically, my mum and dad both rode most bikes. So it was inevitable I was gonna like them. I've always been a tomboy, so I used to ride BMX and that sort of thing. So it was obvious that I was gonna be into motorbikes as well. <laughs> how many pups do you have and their names? So we have five dogs. <laughs> Dogs are a massive part of my life. We've always had a ton of dogs in my household and I honestly, if you were a child that was brought up without dogs, puppies, I feel for you, man. I feel for you. You need dogs in your life. So, if you like, I'll show you each one. So this here is Lacey. She's a Chihuahua Cross Shih Tzu. And I think she's about four or five now. But she's a little sweetheart. She's just sort of... She's angry because I picked her up and sleeping, but she's a little baby and she's so cute. This is Poppy. She's a chihuahua and she's two years old. She's also angry because I just woke her up. I'm sorry, baby. You okay? She is the dominant one in the house. She is king dog. Well, queen dog, should I say. This is China. This is our newest edition. She's not even one yet. She's an absolute sweetheart. Look how cute she is. <laughs> she's a drawer again and she's not looking. But she has one blue eye and she's the cutest thing ever. Uh, this one here is Daisy and she's my absolute favourite. I know it's bad to have favourites but she's my absolute princess. She pretty much follows me everywhere. She's just such a quirky character and if you follow me on Instagram you will know she does some weird stuff <laughs> because I video her all the time. But yeah, she basically sits like a meerkat quite often, just for no reason. But yeah, she likes to be on tables as well. She's always walking around <laughs> on tables. She just likes to be up high, I think, because she's so small. Uh, so this is an interesting one we've got here. So, how come you don't hang around with many other girls on the gram? Clicks, question mark. So, yes. Clicks on Instagram. There is a lot of them. And they are not something I want to be involved in. I've been there, I've done that, I've learned the hard way. So no, I'm not being involved in this whole click, girl gang, girl power stuff. That's just not my vibe. So, do you ever go on motorci motorcycle trips to the European mainland? So basically, touring will answer that question as, do you go touring? So no, I've never been touring as in another country or anything like that. I would like to, I just, for the past sort of, 
Well, since leaving school, I've not had much money to do stuff with. I've never been on holiday abroad, you know, with my own money. I got invited to Slovenia with KTM, as you know. There's a video of, on, of that on my channel here, but I just, I don't have the money to do stuff like that. Even to just go to like Spain for a weekend to lie in the sun. I just don't have the money to, I don't have that spare money and I can't save up for the life of me. So no, but I would like to. I just need a massive pay rise. Next bike. So I do plan to keep this one for probably about at least three years because you know it's quite a lot of money and I want to you know enjoy it and get the most out of it and I'm not really one of the people who changes the bike all the time like really often I sort of get the most out of it um so next bike I don't know something new could come out in three years so yeah I, I can't really say we maybe come back to that one what's your thing, favorite thing about the M209 the alien looks, the power, the comfort, or something else. So, to be honest, when I first rode the M209, I wasn't massively impressed. It didn't, I wasn't like, wow, that was amazing. I was just like, okay, it's good. It's just like my M207, but bigger. So, I guess that sounds kind of weird. Like, why did you buy one? She as if you wasn't really that into it. But, yeah, I really like the headlights, to be honest. I know it's a bit my right, some people don't like it, but I think it looks mint. And now they've got the upgraded rear light that all looks like the S1000 one. I think that looks mint. So yeah, it's definitely not comfort because it's not the comfiest of bikes. But that being said, I do like the seating position. It's a lot higher. It's almost sort of like supermoto style if you ask me. So yeah, I do prefer that. Oh, I've missed a question. How old are you? But I've kind of mentioned that already. I'm 24. Are you doing any more Cadwell track days in the future? Yes. I love Cadwell after my first time there. I want to go all the time, just when I have the money to do it. So yeah, we'll be going back there. What do you love most about your SP? Triple engine, 100%. If you could travel the world, travel anywhere in the world for a week, for free, where would it be? So I've always wanted to go to Japan. I really like Koi. Uh, you might have seen, we have a pond in our garden. Um, my dad collects Koi and I, I really enjoy them. I know that might sound strange because it's just a fish, but it's not just a fish to us. Uh, I would love to go to the Japanese gardens, that whole, you know, I just love that sort of culture. So I'd definitely like to go there. But then also, I'm a bit of a sneaky head, so I wouldn't mind going to like New York and seeing all the, you know, like the massive sneaker shops and stuff. That would be absolutely epic. And see what I mean about being on tables? Like she just helped herself up here. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, uh, I've got what's your next mod? So, probably exhaust, but I don't know when that's gonna be. So, yeah, hopefully, exhaust. Oh, MT10 or 09 SP. So, when I got the 09 SP, everyone was like, why didn't you get an MT10? Well, I can't afford an MT10, I can't afford to insure one, I can only just afford the MT09 SP. So, yeah, that's basically why. So, versus each other I'd probably go with the MT10 but the MT10 is thirsty like it's got a massive drinking problem so you got better in mind if you're gonna get one. Oh as well um I've got some helmet recommendations so obviously I don't need to really tell you expert three that's my recommendation I'm not being paid by showing I just really like the helmet <laughs> How long have you been riding for? So I've been riding for, well, I've got seven years, no claims. So this is my eighth year of riding. Started as soon as I was old enough. Harley's, yay or nay? Sorry guys, nay. <laughs> I can see a doggo. <laughs> Going to use the MT for a winter or get a winter bag. So I, uh, what? <laughs> Spit it out. <laughs> So uh, last, no, sorry, at the start of this year, I was without a car. So I was commuting on the bike full time for six months. And then my uncle got a new car and he gave me his old one, which was only worth scrap. So he gave it to me, uh, which is obviously I really appreciate it. It's not very glamorous, it's not fast. <laughs> it's a 55 Reg Clio, um, but it gets me about. So that's what I'll be using in winter, as long as it lasts. So winter, touch wood, you know, I need it to last. 
I don't want to get my SP dirty. <laughs> okay guys, so I think I've covered quite a lot of questions. I don't want this video to be super long because all you're doing is listening to me talk and we all know that's not a pleasant experience. I have a cold as well as my terrible voice to begin with. So I'm sorry and if you've made it this far, well thank you. <laughs> for Thank you for watching and I will have a lot better stuff coming up soon. I'm getting a lawn bike on Monday, it's now Saturday so in a few days. Uh, I'm not going to reveal what that is to you yet but I'm going to have it for quite a while so I'll be able to do quite a lot of videos with that bike. Um, and if you have any questions on that bike, whatever, we can go through that. So that should be fun. And if you let me know what you think of this kind of video, I'm probably not going to do them often unless you really want me to, but no one really wants to listen to me talk that long. So yeah, if you don't already follow me on Instagram, that's where I, po I post daily. So if you want to keep up with today with me, that's where you're going to find my updates. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hope it wasn't too bad and hopefully the next video is going to be actually riding and probably, hopefully, maybe 209. We'll see.